If you had an ankle or foot fracture, then you have a higher chance of developing foot or ankle arthritis. Ankle arthritis is usually a problem secondary to a foot fracture, ankle sprain, or an inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis. It is a condition caused by loss of cartilage that protects the bones, reduced joint space, and loss of lubricant fluid between the bones. Pain occurs when you put weight on your ankles, so it hurts when you walk, go up and down stairs, or other movements of the ankle. Your doctor suggested you take painkillers or get a cortisone injection, and maybe one day you will need an ankle replacement surgery. But now, is there any kind of exercise you can do to improve your pain and function? Today, let's talk about exercises for ankle arthritis. These exercises are also very helpful if you just had a recent ankle trauma like a sprain or fracture and you were immobilized for a few weeks. After your doctor removed the cast or boot, they told you to do some exercises. Well, these exercises are excellent for that situation. Make sure you have a non-sleep shoe like a sneaker or running shoes or you don't sleep and lose your balance. Do not do this exercise if you get dizzy. If you have a tendency to lose your balance, ask someone, someone to stay with you while you do the balance exercises. So there are eight exercises in this routine, and these are the equipment you will need. You will need some elastic bands for the strengthening exercises, a staircase to practice going up and down, and if you don't have a staircase, you may practice with a step. So exercises are always the first choice treatment for osteoarthritis. You need to remember the laws exercise that I demonstrated in the video of hip and knee osteoarthritis. L is for lubrication exercises. Remember, motion is lotion. They help to warm up the joints, improve range of motion, and break down the thick fluid. You may do lubrication exercise in the morning before you get up from bed. A is for aerobics. They are important to maintain a good cardiovascular system. They also help maintain a healthy weight. And they include walking, going up and down stairs, and many other activities that make your heart beat faster. Make sure to talk to your doctor and ask if you don't have any restrictions to do cardio exercises. W is for weight-bearing exercises. The main advantages are that they reduce pain and maintain calcium in the bones. This is important to avoid osteoporosis, another condition that is very common in people with osteoarthritis. And S is for stretching. This is important to maintain flexibility of the joints, to improve range of motion, and to reduce muscle tension. S is also for strengthening. It is important to maintain the muscles strong to improve the stability of the ankle joint so you don't have another sprain or fracture. Before I continue, please remember that these videos are for educational purposes only. You should consult a physician or your physiotherapist to ask about these exercises. And if there is an emergency, go to the nearest emergency department or call an ambulance. So the first exercise that you can do when you get out of bed is the lubrication exercises for the ankle. So our ankle does plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, inversion, eversion. It's important to do these exercises in the morning because when you sleep, you don't move your ankle, your foot, and then there's not a lot of production of synovial fluid. And then when you wake up in the morning, there might be stiffness of the joint. And doing this lubrication exercise is very easy to do in the bed. What you do is you draw numbers 1 to 0, 1 to 10 with your ankle. So only using the joint, the ankle joint, we are going to draw number 1, number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, nine, and zero. You see? That's easy. You can do a couple of times. And when you do this, you do all movements of the ankle before you even get out of bed. So during the day, the exercise that you can do is just walking. 
and I, I want you to walk on the tippy toes and on your heels. So and make sure that you have a non-sleep shoes, like uh, running shoes or sneakers, so you don't lose your balance and you don't sleep. But if you feel that you're going to lose your balance, make sure that uh, there is a countertop or a chair or some place that you can hold. But this is important. So first, if you go on your tippy toes, try to give a few steps and uh, walk a, a little bit. What happens is you are strengthening the muscles on the back of your leg here, right? So your calf muscles. So if you do this, they, they, especially if they had been immobilized after a fracture or after a ankle sprain, they, they are very weak, the calf muscles. So doing this, you are strengthening them, okay? And do this a couple of times during the day. And you can do this many times during the day, like if you're in the kitchen or if you are, you know, watching TV, you can be doing this exercise. Make sure that you don't lose your balance and you wear some non-sleep shoes. So the other exercise is walking on the heels because when you do this, now you are strengthening the muscles here in the front of your leg. And this is also important because if they had been mobilized, they're weak. And I noticed this sometimes, you know, with these weak muscles, the patients complain that they have uh, cramps in those muscles. So this is a very common source of cramp, uh, weak muscles here if you're not using them. So walking on your heels, you see when you do this, you have to maintain the muscles here, they call tibialis anterioris. So they keep them, you know, contracted. And this is also good for your balance because your ankle controls the balance. The ankle has a lot of uh, receptors for joint position. They're called proprioception. Proprioception means your brain is receiving information about the position of your joints. And when you are immobilized for a long time, or if you have arthritis of your ankles, you're not receiving that information so well. So by doing this a couple of times, walking on your heels, you will be exercising that joint training the proprioception, but also strengthening these muscles in front of your leg. So the other exercise is imagine that there is a straight line here on the floor and you're going to walk in tendon with one foot in front of the other one. This is good for your balance. Again, as I explained, we have proprioception coming from the joints, the bones, the cartilage, they send information to your brain about the position of our joints. For example, if I don't look at my ankle, I know exactly the position. This is going down, this is up. How do I know the position of my joints without looking at them? It's because of the proprioception. So when we do this, we are training a lot of things. We are training balance. And again, make sure that you don't fall. You can touch you know, the wall if you think you're going to fall. But if you don't touch anything and you don't look at your foot, Okay, so you don't look down, try to walk putting one foot in front of the other one so the heel touch the tiptoes, the other heel touch. You will see this is not easy, it looks easy, but it's not because especially if you had been mobilized in a cast or in a boot for a couple of weeks, you lost this ability to sense your joints and if your proprioception is not good, then you're more predisposed to have another ankle sprain, ankle fracture, or any other problem with your feet because you're losing the ability to control the movements of your ankle and the bones in, the, in your foot. So these are exercises that you can do during the day many times. So the other exercise that we're going to do is a strengthening exercise with some elastic bands here to uh, do some resistance to the movements. So the, the ankle does this movement, plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So here you see, and you can always compare the left and right. If you had a, the left one, for example, immobilized because you had a sprain or fracture. And now your doctor told you, you can remove the boot or the cast and start doing exercise. You may compare, you know, the two, because you may notice the normal one can dorsiflex up to here. You see it's 90 degrees, a little bit more than 90 degrees. 
And maybe the, the one, the affected side is like here. You can't do more than this. And the same thing for plantar flexion. You see plantar flexion normal is almost like a straight line here. And when you had been mobilized for a long time, maybe you cannot do this. Maybe your movements are just from here to here, like here to here. And then you, you need to gain that range of motion. And how are you going to do this? With exercise. And exercise like plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. And if you have a resistance band like this, so then you can apply some resistance and you do this exercise against resistance. So you're also not only gaining range of motion, but you're also gaining some coordination because you, you see you have to coordinate the movements and also strengthening the muscles. Especially here, you're strengthening the muscles of your calf muscles. Okay, and you can use different resistance bands. There are some that are harder than other ones. So then the other exercise that the ankle does is inversion, eversion. Inversion is inside, eversion is to the outside. So we also need to do exercises to strengthen the muscles. The muscles that do eversion, they are here on the side of the leg, and the muscles that do inversion, they are here on the back inside of the leg. And I like to use uh, like a loop resistance bands and I have these ones like this is extra light this is light a little bit stronger this one is heavy so and this is very extra heavy uh, extra heavy so you need more so you can progress you know from the light to the heavy ones so let's try with this one if we're going to do eversion exercise what you do is you just put them here and you use your good foot to do resistance with the, the, the foot that you're treating. So here, just do this and you can do this a couple of times and you can hold here. Hold, hold, hold. You can hold up to eight, ten seconds and come back and hold. And you do this like eight repetitions. The more you do, the better. And the stronger the elastic bands, the, the more uh, strength you're putting there, more power you're putting in the muscles, right? So this is for eversion for the muscles outside. And if you put your hands here, you're going to notice like relax muscle, put your hands here. Now you're going to feel that they are contracting. These are the peroneal muscles or fibulary muscles. Okay. Now, how are you going to do for the inversion? You do the same thing, but now you do with the legs crossed. Okay. So now with the legs crossed like this, you put here. So now let's say that, uh, let's say that this is the affected foot. The other one will just stay quiet there. And this one you're going to pull inside. And the same thing, you hold for a couple of seconds. Hold, hold, hold. And you can put your hand here and you're going to notice that the muscles are contracting and you're strengthening the inversion muscles. So this exercise for the ankle, you need to do in a stair. So find a staircase. If you live in an apartment, maybe go to the staircase of your apartment. Make sure that you have handrails so you don't lose your balance and fall. And uh, if you think you're going to lose your balance, make sure that there's someone with you and uh, you are safe and you're not going to fall. So this is an exercise that we're going to go up and down stairs. But this is more like a training, brain training of exercise. Like it's retraining your brain how to use the ankle. Because if you just go up and down stairs normally, that's so automatic that you're not even paying attention to what you're doing. But if you pay attention, we're going to go only on the right foot up. And when you do this, you see it's not automatic, so you have to think about. And when you're thinking about the exercise you're doing, you're sending messages to your brain that your ankle is moving normal and your ankle has healed. 
And when you send information to your brain that that body part that was injured now is healed, the pain goes away because your brain doesn't need to be alerting you with the pain signals anymore, okay? So we're going to do is simple, just go up on the right leg. And when you're doing this, pay attention on the movement of your ankle, your knees, your hips, okay? You go up on the right, and now you go down on the right. Just using the right, down, right, down, right, down, right, 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 right. So you do this a couple of times, up and down. And now we are going to do with the left leg. So leg, left, leg up, left, left, left. And you can do this many times. And again, left, down now. Left, 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 and left. Okay, so this exercise is to stretch the calf muscles here, and we're going to use the first step to do this exercise. So you just, uh, if you don't have staircase, just find a box or a step that you can do this exercise. You just go on the edge here, and you do this for both at the same time, and you just let your ankle, you see, so when you do this, the ankle, the heels go down, the tip of your foot go up and you are stretching the muscles, the calf muscles. So you can go a little bit forward with your body, forward, you'll be doing this more and just relax here and feel the calf muscles stretching. So if you like this video, press the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, in the description of this video below, you may find a summary of these positions and exercises that you can download and print to do at home. Also, there is a link to all products that I mentioned in this video if you want to purchase them. And watch my next video here. Goodbye!